particularly likes John Boehner, that burnout idiot. Who likes any of this scum? We're all sick of them, but they force feed us. But now I've got articles and videos up on Infowars.com where about 50 people showed up at a Hillary event to meet her. She's walking dead politically. Now, can they resuscitate her? See, they can't help but force feed Jeb Bush and Hillary Clinton. And it shows how disconnected again they are. And we may not win in this round or the next round, but they're losing steam. They're losing control. They are falling apart, not us. That's why they declare we're dead as we rise. Because we're the real liberals. We're the people that promote low taxes, having firearms, having privacy, running your own life. We're the people that promote 500 horsepower cars. We're the people that promote having fun. We're not the control freaks. All right, I'm going to get into all the huge world news, incredible uh, testimony from an abortion survivor and more. Big There's just so much to get to today. I'm also going to play that clip since I mentioned it because we played it in overdrive a couple days ago of almost every person well-spoken, a lot of them older liberal types, white people mainly, uh, saying let's ban the Bible, ban the sale of the Bible. And it just shows what a cult of authoritarians these people are. They have us be tolerant of them until they get into control, and then they become as totalitarian as North Korea. And anywhere you put collectivists in control, you end up in a hellish North Korea slash Stalinist gulag with little pot-bellied nobodies with submachine guns ruling over you while you starve to death. Because that's what they produce. And again, you've got big major corporations that get government bailouts funding the major mainstream media, propping up the facade, billions in bailout money going to NBC, General Electric, hundreds of millions going into MSNBC of taxpayer money, 400 and something million a year to NPR for decades, billions going into Planned Parenthood, all of it. And then what do they always sit around and lecture off the Clinton talking points from 1993 that were given to the media. This is in the Clinton Foundation. It's come out. The Clinton Library. That's a bigger deal than what World Net Daily even made of it. And Farah said some of it was so damning he was scared to release it. I want to see it released a year later. In fact, call Farah. Really tell him I want him to come on the show, please. And, and I want to know what else is in there. Because what was in there was bad enough. What they released, a small part of it, was how they would shape the media. How they would shut down new media. How they would control information. Well, guess what, Hillary? It may have taken 25 years, but you failed, your highness. You failed miserably. And the fact that, what, two or three people run Drudge? It's pointed out, you can tell when Drudge is on vacation because it's not as good than when he's doing it. Not knocking his other guys. It's just that he's the guru of what he does. So three people run something that reaches more people with news and politics than Facebook that's number two that has been valued at over $100 billion. A $100 billion operation cannot counter three people because the truth, and not that any of us are infallible, not that any of us have all the answers, but that we're trying to tell the truth. And the will to tell the truth trumps the fraud. And by the way, they had a $100 billion stock offering at first. I was being conservative. They just fact-checked me. I'm sorry. People think I exaggerate. Nine times out of ten, it's the opposite. Facebook is now worth more than Walmart. $245 billion. Thank you for correcting me. Almost two and a half times more value. So it's worth $245 billion. And I've seen the Drudge Report valued in different news articles for 50 to 100 million just because of the influence. So you got something with three people that trumps something with tens of thousands of people, $245 billion. See, my brain just automatically goes to the lowest number I know so that I'm not exaggerating. It's a neurotic thing I do, and because of it,
I wanted to say it was worth over $200 billion. I just went from memory what I thought was safe. They check everything I say neurotically. Usually it's right. I was wrong. There's another example of where I knew it was worth 200 plus billion. I was going to say 240 plus billion, and I just went ahead and dialed back to their initial stock offering of what six, seven years ago or whatever it was, five years ago of 100 billion. But I'm kind of digressing. People want this teleprompter free, somebody trying to tell them the truth, somebody busting their butt to be accurate versus someone saying, <laughs> when you raise the debt limit, that doesn't raise the debt. Well, yes, it does. I don't care if you're part black and I'm racist because I say you're a liar. You are a liar, Barack Obama, and your race car doesn't work anymore. It may work on the sheeple. It may work on the lemmings. But here's the difference. Lemmings don't produce. Lemmings are a joke. And it's the thinkers. It's the builders. It's the inventors. It's the fighters that will never submit to you. And 5% of liberty lovers will defeat the giant mass of drooling morons that are your servants. And so that's what it comes down to. So you want to be allied with new automated smart grids that control everything in your central systems and robots as if that is going to finally give you the armies you need to defeat good. Good only rises when you get the upper hand and you're about to have your political arms ripped out of their sockets. News is coming up. So it is a facade. The liberals are not liberals. They are social engineer eugenicist control freaks. It's military camouflage. They are scientifically focused, very wicked anti-human people. Their operatives control the Republican Party as well. Our job is to expose these enemies. And when I say enemies, I say that before God Almighty. I'm very careful about who I attack. I'm very careful about who I judge. And I know for a fact the people that run the Democratic Party are willful organized crime criminals that hate you and your family and who are eugenicists and who are narcotics traffickers and child snuff film purveyors and the worst murdering filth you can imagine. They are beyond serial killers. They want to wreck everything good. They want to wreck free market. They want you poor. They want to abort you before you're born. They want to inject you with deadly vaccines. They want to suck you dry before they kill you. Basically, they're an army of Satanists. And, and again, I don't mince words there. There is not rhetoric that will rise to the level of how bad they are. My mom's brother who died last year would never tell me Vietnam stories, even though he'd been shot down seven times, how decorated his main job was delivering special forces trips uh, via helicopter. And I always asked him to tell me stories when I was a kid. And he finally, when I was a teenager, said, fine, I'll tell you stories. The smell of rotten flesh all the time. All the blood and stuff would get in the helicopters and get down in the gears and get down in their bellies. And when you land helicopters, there'd be the smell of rotten flesh. And there'd be dead bodies of men, women, and children laying around bloating in the sun. And he goes, have you heard enough? It's not fancy. It's not fun. It's not cool. I remember getting old World War II vets that were friends with my grandfather who would let them, you know, hunt on our property every year on the first day of deer season right after Thanksgiving. There'd be like 20, 30 old World War II vets. And over the years, they all died. They were all so cool and fun to talk to, but I'd always tell me a World War II story, tell me a World War II story. And they very would rarely tell me any stories, but one of them was telling me, yeah, the worst part was it wasn't just that the Nazis had forced labor camps and death camps, but millions of Germans were starving to death every month or so there at the end of the war. 20 million Germans died, about half of them starving to death. And they would have them once they'd taken an area, just bulldoze dead bodies as far as the eye could see with blackbirds eating the flesh off the bones. And they said it was the smell of rotten meat, no matter where you were, the smell of the dying people, the smell of their rotting bodies.
and having to drag them around all day and bulldoze them into big piles. Then another one, another vet, Elmer Nevels, I was bugging him when he was cooking gravy for biscuits at like 4.30 in the morning because I was going to ride with him. He had an old van. He'd take off roads of these gullies and stuff that he had all rigged up with big tires. And he goes, you want to hear a story? Worst part was killing beautiful women. You know, like your mama, your mama's a real pretty blonde. But well, they'd send them out there, look like Marilyn Monroe, and they'd open up a fur coat and pull a machine gun out, and I'd cut them in half. And little kids, and you're sitting there, he goes, now you done asking those questions? And he was a sweet old guy until I kept pestering him to tell me a World War II story. And I learned really quick, don't ask the World War II stories. And now we're in this modern world where the bodies aren't all rotting out in front of us with thousands of birds eating their bodies, like something out of Hellraiser. It's done through vaccines and through fluoride and through GMOs, and the doctors are compartmentalized. They're not part of it. And you bring your little kid in, and they get the shots. They have convulsions. 20 years later, they're soft-killed in diapers. You know, the way the globalist hit us, we never know what hit us. It kills us 10 years later, 20 years later. It's so funny to them. They're laughing. They enjoy that they're in on it. The ruling establishment knows they've poisoned you and your family. They like it. They want to hurt you. And they've got huge armies of people. Because Mark dies. We used to do these videos showing dumb liberals who aren't really liberals. He started doing it in California. We went out there in the very same areas last year and duplicated it with our reporters. We do it in Austin and get pretty much the same response. We get seven out of 10 saying put gun owners in forced labor camps and kill us or ban Christianity. He gets eight or nine out of 10 to do it. And let me explain something to you. I can walk pretty much anywhere in Austin near the university or a trendy area and they will say put gun owners in slave camps. They're ready to do it. Now, if I go to a blue-collar area with a bunch of work trucks, with a bunch of guys that are plumbers, black, white, Hispanic, you name it, they'll say, how about you get out of here before we kick your butt, buddy? Or We have a right to own guns in this country. The people working know what's going on. You go in a wealthy area, they'll be, what's crazy? We have a Second Amendment, but you go to the trendy areas with all the know-it-alls, these people are dangerous. And that's what I'm getting at. They'll take everything we've got. They'll suck it out of us and never think twice. But here's the difference. They're never going to reach the promised land. They're just the dumb idiots helping sell things down the rat hole. When the globalists come to full power, they're the first people that are going to be on the chopping block. So the New World Order social engineers have been real good at hiding a lot of their evil behind the scenes. But all of that is now coming to a close. And everything's starting to unravel, and it can't be hidden anymore. And that's why they're trying to accelerate their program, because they're behind schedule. So be happy in our discontent. Be happy in our problems, because it's like when you get the flu and you're throwing up, your body's getting the virus out. Your body's emptying out. You're going to get better. That high fever is going to burn through that virus. And we have to go through this. And we're here warning people as the shock troops, saying the stuff nobody will say. Because the attack is so big, so evil, so calculated, so over the top, that they know the average wholesome person can't deal with it, can't process it, because it's so over the top and so diabolical. It's my job to be attacked to be demonized, to be taken out of context, because I know that everything we talk about is going to start unfolding. So much of it already has. 60, 70 percent already has. And so now the ridicule doesn't work. Now the ridicule is a red badge of honor. It's the mark of courage. It's the blood of victory. How many people that are establishment folks get the word their 10-year-old's got cancer? That'll wake you up real fast. 
How many cops you think wake up in big cities when they get briefings that veterans and gun owners are the enemy and the feds expect a civil war with gun confiscation? You think that wakes the police up when they get called in and get told that? And then the founding fathers are bad men?